Well, hello again. This is uh, Bill Roller. It is Tuesday, um, April 18th. I'm here with uh, Michael Harding. Michael Elrith is traveling. Uh, so it's been a you know pretty good week in the market. It's been flat. Market was uh, up a little bit last week. Uh, so I guess you could say we're now waiting on the Fed uh, as it is. Um, one thing that's kind of in of interest, uh, Netflix um, uh, fell after they announced their earnings. It wasn't too huge, uh, but uh, they're down in after hours trading. I guess the uh, you know people are cutting back on subscriptions. In fact, I saw a uh, um, article that said um, that um, you know people are cutting back on all their subscriptions that they're no longer using. So maybe that was the case. Even though Netflix is basically now flat, it was off uh, almost nine percent, but now it it's, looks like it's recovered. So maybe their makeovers going to be having some legs but uh, michael harding what's happening in the wonderful world of well real estate? Bill, before we begin that um i've heard that uh, a couple of things about netflix uh one thing that they were talking about towards the beginning of the of the year and maybe towards the end of last year is cutting down on the password sharing to to try to increase the subscribers that way by preventing people from sharing households for example from sharing passwords thereby instead of having one uh account at two separate households what they would like to do is have uh two accounts at each household and uh and conducting business that way but i've heard that they've cut back on that because there was such a huge uh uproar about that um especially in these economic times that we're in and so uh they they've paused that and uh, they're gonna, I didn't know they were still doing this. This was a question that I was asking myself. Um, they're gonna stop their their DVD delivery system. They're, they're still doing that. Uh, September 29th of this year is when they're gonna ship out their last DVDs, um, I guess forever. And they're just gonna solely concentrate on their streaming services. That's what I understand. Um, they also have been talking about uh, actually streaming gaming uh, so that'll also make make a difference. But um, you know they're they're trying to adapt to the times. Um, and like I said, a lot of a lot of people are saying, "Hey, I don't want to be paying subscription things anymore." Um, so I, I mean, I mean, in my case, um, I've cut back on a lot of magazine subscriptions. I have I have more library cards, <laughs> so you could yeah. argue I don't need them. Yeah, I, I've done the same thing because um, you know I was. What on virtually every premium subscription thing, um, the Hulu, ESPN Plus, Disney Plus, Paramount, um, um, Disney Plus, not, yeah, uh, Discovery Plus, you know, and the list goes on. But um, I've, I've scaled down considerably. Um, HBO Max, but so what I did was I I found because there's a a T-Mobile commercial that I've seen in which uh, if you sign up for T-Mobile, you get Apple TV for free. Oh, not a bad deal. So I've, I've done something similar because I have uh, AT&T as a cell phone provider. So now I get HBO Max for free, but it's through my um, my cell phone carrier. And you so that's one way I offset the cost. You get that through AT&T? Yeah. Oh, well. I might check into that. Yeah, and, and so there's there's other other ones that uh, offer something similar. Again, uh, T-Mobile offers um, uh, Apple TV, and um, I don't know if um, oh, what's the other big one? Verizon. I'm not sure if Verizon offers uh, a service, a subscription service like that, but I'm sure they do because they're all seem to be doing that. Yeah. Well, they're all trying to bundle and kind of do things. So, um, yeah. 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 And, you know, that's kind of frustrating to me personally, uh, because I'd rather just pay for something once and be done with it instead of having this monthly or annual subscription service. Uh, because, like, there, I remember, you know, not too long ago when if you wanted uh, Microsoft products like Microsoft Office, you pay 50 bucks and then, then you own it until the next time they upgrade it. Well, you paid a lot more than 50 bucks, but yeah, but the, the company that first made that change actually was Adobe. Um, right. It, you know, went to the subscription model 
and unfortunately everybody's doing it and uh you know i guess they they you know these software companies thought they were on kind of like a a treadmill constantly trying to upgrade and then get people to buy the new software and so i said we're going to go on a subscription model and of course yeah, the, and the, adobe, but, adobe was one of the ones that i'm frustrated with because yeah. uh uh you know, if you need to use Adobe for anything, you got a pay subscription, and and it's not that cheap. It's rather, rather expensive. Rather pricey. I yeah. Offhand, what it is. Yeah, I mean, I I have a version of a five point five Master Collection, and then I haven't upgraded that in about ten years. Nor nor do I intend to. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't have that luxury of already owning it, so. Yeah. If I want to use it, then I have to um, have to pay the monthly subscription fee, yeah. which I'm hesitant to do. Yeah. Well, there's you just got to look for the uh, the cheap alternatives. They are out there. There are shareware advantage or a you know Google or a shareware type um, type software packages out there, but you got to kind of look for them. Yeah. Um, I went to Office Depot. Um, in orchards uh, one time looking for uh, adobe products and um the manager he said well we're out of it but what i do is i go to these and he wrote down two websites that have programs on par with with adobe it's just that adobe is just a little bit more advanced if, if adobe comes out with an upgrade then it takes those other two websites maybe six months to catch up to what Adobe is doing, yeah, because Adobe's the 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 big dog on the big fish in the little pond with uh, that regard to that type of software. Yeah, yeah, but, but it, it, it's out there. You just got to look for it. Um, and you know, you don't need. I found you really don't need cutting edge software because really you're only using about ten percent of the feature set anyway. And uh, unless you're some super duper high end person, and then you know, you can get paid for it to make it worthwhile. Yeah, that, well, that's not me. Yeah. So what's happening in the wonderful world of real estate? Well, uh, I, you know, I looked at the numbers. I pull, I, I, I uh, pulled the numbers together yesterday, no, Sunday, Sunday, because I run it uh, Saturday through Friday. So uh, Saturday or Sunday is when I try to pull all the numbers together. So I did it Sunday, and the uh, the numbers were so off that I I don't know what I was thinking, but I said, well, I'm not going to record these numbers. I'm going to wait till tomorrow, pull them again, and see if they change. Not that they wouldn't, because none of my parameters have changed. And so there was a a, a huge spike in the list price and the sales price. Yeah, I'm huge, looking, I see that here. Price. Let me pop it up here for you. Um, and I couldn't determine the cause of it. Yes, there were there were uh, several that were a uh, million dollars or above that that sold, but that has no bearing on the list price. So um, I, I couldn't make heads or tails of it. So I just decided to just trust the numbers and and report them as as they're as they're uh, presented. Uh, new to market. Uh, you know, really, uh, Bill, there's really not that dramatic of a change in a new to market price change pendings and sold. Uh, the thing that did fluctuate upward is the uh, the percentage. We went from 63.8 last week to uh, 71 this this week, which is you know a decent uh, increase. Um, if you notice, the days on market, the next uh, column over, went down, and um, this may be indicative of us moving into the um, the uh, the season in which we have a lot more activity, and there's the uh, the average list price jump that I was referring to. That's all of what nearly eighty thousand uh, yeah. dollars price jump in one week, and so uh, and it's nearly the same increase uh, with the sold. The only and if you look at the price per square foot, uh, this week is two eighty eight. Last week two eighty three. And for the solds, it's, it's a similar increase. The only thing that's different that I could see was that the square footage of the home is, is bigger this week than it has been in any other week this year, except for one. Um, 
uh, with, we had a 2170 um, price, I mean, uh, square footage. So if you take the higher uh, price per square foot, you know, either the list price or the, the sold price, and you multiply it by the, the, um, the size of the average home, then that's where you get the big numbers. And so I'm going to be really interested to take a peek at what the numbers bear out for uh, for next week because yeah. if we if we stay around that same uh, price point with the list price per square foot and the sold price per square foot, but we have a uh, a smaller average for the home sold, then those numbers are bear out. But as you can see, last week the average square footage was 1,900. So you're talking uh, nearly 250 square feet more this week than what we had last week. And so hopefully uh, we'll, we'll get a better indication next week when we look at the numbers. Well, could just could just be an outlier. Um, yeah, that too, that too, because we've seen that several times in which we've experienced a, a, a huge increase and then uh, subtle pullbacks, um, not as big as the increase, but uh, more sustained pullbacks over over an extended period, as opposed to one big jump forward or one, you know, steep fall backwards. Yes. Huh. Very interesting. Well, we'll kind yeah. of see what that whether that upward trend continues. Yeah, and um, if you notice, those are the the uh, high price points of the year so far. Yeah. Well, that might that might be good news. We'll find out. Well, it, uh, it might be good news if you if you currently own, but it's, it'll be terrible news if you're looking to buy. Right. Because right. it'll price a lot of people outside of uh, what they can qualify for in terms of affordability. Yeah, that jump of about 80000 is, you know, pretty severe. Right, right. So it's going to be interesting to see um, how the numbers bear out. Yeah. Um. Okay, I'll stop sharing that. Yeah, and so Bill, last week, uh, towards the end of our conversation last week, uh, you and Mike were discussing the the, uh, the upcoming PPI. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the CPI came in a little bit a little bit lighter, um, so it was it was down, and the producer price index was down year over year, um, so inflation is showing some signs of cooling off, at least on a on a short term basis. Um, so the, um, the market's liking that a little bit. Uh, let me just look at what, uh, the, uh, 10 year has been doing so far. Um, yeah, 10 year, well, it kind of popped up, um, on, uh, yesterday and kind of popped up above the, the, um, the, um, 200 day moving average. So it's at 3.572. Uh, was the last one 30 year looks like um yeah it's also making kind of a made kind of a move up um to 3.787 <clears throat> uh but uh, the good news is it looks like it's a little bit less um inverted at least between the tens and the uh and the 30 um let's see what the um yeah, it looks like um, yeah the the, um, the the short term rates are still are still fairly high. We're still inverted, but you know not not as bad. So we may get a more reasonable yield curve there. Um, looks like um, Goldman Sachs had a bit of an earnings disappointment today. Uh, so the big banks were were down. Um, what are the regionals doing? Uh, Key Bank. It hasn't really recovered from uh, the um, the big sell-off with Silicon Valley Bank, um, and neither has U.S. Bank, even though it's looking rather flat. So it moved down from about 45 to 35. So it took the hit, but it doesn't seem to be imploding further. Yeah, I was going to ask you, uh, is there any indication of how the banking industry is faring post Silicon Valley Bank? And uh, what was the other one, Signature? Uh, um, the collapse of two, those two banks. Yeah, well, there were did see some figure that said that um, um, the regional banks lost about sixty billion in deposits last week. Um, so, 
it's not a it's not a torrent, but there we are still seeing some movement um, um, back to the uh, money center banks. So you think the uh, the Chase, the Wells Fargo's, um, the um, yeah Chase, JP, Bank. yeah J.P. Morgan, you know Citibank, um, they're still kind of sucking up some of the deposits from the smaller banks, even though not quite at the velocity that they were before. Um, but also, you know, loan originations are going to be down for all the all those banks. Um, you know, so competition to give you know loans to the A clients is probably going to get pretty extreme. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I don't remember uh, which station I was listening to or which which um, news show, but I also heard that uh, more Americans are defaulting on their credit card. Uh, loans or you know the payments the balances that they owe and so there's a suspecting or suspicion that they're gonna the banks are in the lending agent uh, lending agencies the credit card agencies they're going to start tightening uh their their underwriting and approving fewer uh credit cards and loans and things of that nature yeah well i'm sure that's the case and i'm sure they're tightening up their uh, their mortgage standards as well uh so so you're seeing more signs of distress, certainly in uh, in the consumer segments. Um, so, you know, that's part of the whole part of the whole process. Um, so we'll see how long this you know this contraction lasts. You know, until the Fed starts uh, pivoting and easing rates again. Well, is there any? Um, because the the recession, in my opinion, this is now I may be completely wrong. But a recession is really a lagging indicator of the health of the economy. Is there anything more, more um, foretelling of the health of the economy? Because a, a recession is two consecutive quarters of a negative GDP. Well, so you're talking about half a year. Right. Well, the, I mean, the, the, the strongest leading indicator um, on the economy is the stock market. And it's, you know, it's it really hasn't hasn't recovered um you know from the from the sell-off um in october november uh you know i mean it's it's kind of come off come off the bottom but it hasn't gotten the new highs um you know it's just kind of a, a trading range market uh so that's going to be the biggest the biggest indicator um you know like last um you know, well, it there's a strong peak in August of uh, 2022, and uh, you know, of course, we haven't gotten back to all time highs at all. You know, like the Nasdaq at 15,000, we're at about 12,000, and then on the on the Dow, um, it was at about 36,000, a little bit better there. We're at about 33, but um, you know, st still not really a, a bull market, at least not yet. A lot of sector well, um, rotation, a lot of a lot of trading ranges, a lot of you know stuff kind of going back and forth. Yeah, another another big topic that was uh, mentioned quite a bit was the um, the possibility of America defaulting on their payments because um, not raising the debt ceiling uh, limit. Any, well, uh, yeah, we're seeing we're seeing the whole political stuff starting to play out with that. Um, you know, you had the 20 Republicans who prevented um, Speaker McCarthy from uh, becoming Speaker. It took 13 votes. So they've been a pretty intractable block. Um, from what I understand, basically, Biden was hoping that the uh, Republican caucus would would fracture and, you know, he'd be able to get a, a, a clean debt increase. That's not looking like it's going to happen. Uh, so, you know, the scenario I'm seeing is that um, they'll come up with a budget um, that'll have some spending reductions in there, pass it in the House, and then throw it over to the Senate and let them fight it out. But well, it, yeah, it's going to be a it's going to be a game of chicken. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, let's see who blinks first. Um, I'm sorry, say that again. They're they're going to play chicken to see who blinks first. Yeah, it's yeah, and neither one may blink. So we'll see. Um, but if the if the Republicans do pass a budget, remember appropriation bills start in the House, um, and they can hang tough. Then, you know, it's, 
people forget it's not the it's not the president who who creates the budget and really appropriates the money. It's it's the uh, it's Congress that does that. And you know the fact that they haven't asserted themselves at all really in the last uh, I don't know fifteen years doesn't mean they're not constitutionally supposed to do that. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting because there's a um, a lot of people that I've spoken to that are are you know weighing their options in terms of the timing of buying a house is not that they're trying to time the market because I've always discouraged people from doing that, but they're they're trying to figure out if now's the right time based on the political, social, you know, economic environment that we currently have going on. So, you know, um, you know, like with the debt ceiling, for example, and the recession, and right. how is that going to impact the job market and, and everything like that? So um, there's a lot of lot of fear out there right now. Yeah. I mean, pe people don't like uncertainty and there's plenty of it going on right now. So, but, you know, we'll hopefully get through it. Yeah, we will one way or another. Um, it just depends on... Uh, what if you're sitting in the chair when the music stops? That's right. Well, that's all I got, Michael. Anything else? That's it for me. Let me stop recording here.